The philosopher Tolstoy wrote about how in order to live, man must find a way to connect the finite to the infinite. We need to form some kind of kinship between ourselves and the unfathomable vastness of the cosmos. We are star stuff, said Carl Sagan. We are made of atoms, literally cooked in the furnaces of dying stars. And so in many ways, we are infinite. Yet as psychologist Ernest Becker wrote, we are nevertheless housed in heart-pumping, breath-gasping, decaying bodies, simultaneously gods and worms. And so we need a bridge, a conduit to the numinous. And perhaps no greater instrument in the history of humankind than the telescope can provide this cathartic bridge as it blasts open new tunnels between the mind and the other. Ross Anderson's dazzling essay on the James Webb Telescope reminds us that in his metaphysics, Aristotle called seeing the noblest faculty of man. Anderson goes on to describe with requisite virtuosity how the deep field images of the universe taken by the Hubble literally mainline all of space and time the optic so that the space telescope has downloaded space and time into our eyeball whereas once we were blind now we could see he continues through the sheer aesthetic force of its discoveries the hubble has distilled the complex abstractions of astrophysics into singular expressions of color and light vindicating keats famous couplet beauty is truth truth, beauty, and thus allowing the layman to witness the scope and grandeur of the universe through an unprecedented expansion of human vision, something the new James Webb Space Telescope will take to a whole new level. Anderson continues, the telescope has provided nothing less than an ontological awakening, a forceful reckoning with what is, as we get to witness galaxies pinwheeling in deep time. Something happens to us during these moments of introspective contemplation, drunk on awe, as we literally get to contemplate space and time on a scale just shy of the infinite that enlarges the boundaries of our being. Astronauts have called this the overview effect. Neil deGrasse Tyson calls it the cosmic perspective. We get to move beyond the self towards something grander, more majestic, ineffable. And we chase these experiences ravenously, as Henry Weismeyer wrote, as spirituality wanes, experience is the new faith, and we are refugees from the mundane. And so we shall continue achingly to resuscitate that sense of humbling incomprehension, so that we may say, ah, yes, I remember what I forgot. In the words of Nizagardata, the other world is this world rightly seen. So there's a great quote by the poet's Yate, which says, the world is full of magic things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. In other words, in our search for the miraculous, we find that it's often right before our very eyes, but we fail to see it, right? We are blind, we cannot decipher. But Henry Miller says, if we could pinpoint our attention, right, we would see that even a blade of grass, when given proper attention, becomes a magnificent world in itself. And how do we focus our attention? With our tools, like the microscope, or even more interestingly, like the telescope, as it literally allows us to swallow the macro, right? Think of a space telescope, which as the poet author Ross Anderson describes, allows us to mainline space and time 
through the optic nerve. Literally, a space telescope takes images of the deep field, takes images of the universe, and literally distills through the sheer aesthetic impact, the aesthetic force of its discoveries. It distills the complex, the unfathomably complex abstractions of astrophysics, the, the mathematics that is beyond our understanding. It literally distills it into singular expressions of color and of light, vindicating Keats, the poet, famous couplet, beauty is truth, truth, beauty, right? We see images of the universe taken through a space telescope and we realize this is nothing less, my friends, as Ross Anderson says, as nothing less than an ontological awakening, a forceful reckoning, a reckoning with what is, which allows us to contemplate space and time on a scale just shy of the infinite. And what does this do? when we are cracked open by awe, our agitating consciousness, right? In pain from the human condition, the mortal coil, all of a sudden connect with something grander than itself, connects with something radiant, with something resplendent. We are split apart by the majesty of the universe, by awe, and we become more than what we were. We experience the astronaut overview effect, what Neil deGrasse Tyson calls the cosmic perspective. We see the big, picture. We are transformed, we are reset, and we are filled with feelings of grace and gratitude. This, this kind of awe therapy made possible by these technological instruments such as space telescopes enlarge us, right? They bewitch us and they, oh my god, what they do for the mind is they allow us to fit the universe through our brains. And as I ended my video on awe, it comes out as nothing less than poetry. We. As Carl Sagan says, we are star stuff and we remember what we forgot. So what's the expression I'm searching for here? How about straight from the horse's mouth? <laughs> oh my goodness. These are videos that I came across yesterday when I was uh, poking around looking at footage um, when I was doing this stuff on Venus and Mars and wound up kind of getting lost on a rabbit trail with uh, Carl Sagan and uh, the whole Cosmos, the Cosmos film that he made, where in that clip he mentions the spaceship of the imagination. I thought, oh, oh wow, well, that's a whole fascinating little metaphor in itself right there. How telling is that? So I was going off on this tangent about spaceship of the imagination, which is featured in the Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, version of Cosmos that came out a few years ago. I mean, what a hilarious kind of ironic allegory that that actually is. <laughs> the spaceship of the imagination being really the only way you can get to space, right? But anyway, so I was looking for stuff on spaceship of the imagination, and it led me to this video called We Are the Captains of Spaceship Earth by this guy, Jason Silva, who has this entire channel, he's had it since 2013, called Shots of Awe. And yeah, and I just had to uh, share a couple of those because they're just, they're these two minute short, intense, sort of stream of consciousness style philosophizing by by Silva here. Uh, basically just riffing on, you know, what is just, a, when you boil it down, it's just blatant, unabashed, new age philosophy. But what is so fascinating about s so much of it is that on, I mean, I mean, here in these videos here, he's, it's not even just that he's alluding to the, the idea of a correlation between the concepts of outer space and the cosmos and galaxies and with spiritual realms and dimensions and and all these sort of you know making the the, the connections between mysticism and quote unquote science but he actually just comes out and and says it and articulates it in a way that which i myself had never would never come to even quite express in such a in, in such a poignant way and so when i when i found this material i was at first, I was pretty uh, blown away and, I guess, excited just to find something that kind of confirmed the things that, that I've been seeing and noticing more and more. And uh, even with the spacesuit thing, I mean, one of those videos, he's wearing a t-shirt with a spaceman over a pentacle and, you know, it's all this esoteric imagery with the spaceman. And then the way they're, these videos are all edited, they're all in this very intense style of, you know, his, it's him talking and just kind of, you know, fluidity of thought, just, just spitting at all these, all these ideas, all this hermetic philosophy, basically. Um, this, you know, this Gnostic 
you know, neo-Gnostic philosophy. And then they just splice in all kinds of different edits, and they're almost inevitably, in, in every one that I watch, and I watch like a dozen of them, they incorporate, you know, all this time-lapse photography, but always incorporating all these images of galaxies and nebulas and deep space and, and all this, you know, exploding, exploding supernovas and all this sort of, like, like space psychedelica, like I've been, <laughs> like I've been talking about. But not just because it looks cool, but because he's, when you listen to just even what he's saying alone, he's talking about how this transforms your consciousness, how this... Oh, seeing these things changes your perspective, actually affects you on a psychological, philosophical, and spiritual level, invokes a feeling of awe, and transforms you, you know, and, and like I said, it's coming straight out of the, out of the mouth of somebody who is, like, what's so crazy is that he is, on the one hand, articulating all these fundamental Gnostic doctrines, philosophically described mystical ideas, and in a medium which is totally geared towards in, uh, you know, a younger audience, of, you know, the millennial generation, essentially, the YouTube generation, whatever you want to call it. And so the delivery style is, is such, you know, he's another one of these, like, hipster, new age prophet types. So there's the delivery style, but at the same time, in terms of the content and the, the system, the belief system that he's outlining here is one that is embracing the mystical, while at the same time not renouncing the, the classical modernist materialistic sciences, right? So he's quoting, so he'll quote from philosophers and poets and mystics, at the same time turn around and quote, you know, astronauts and physicists and Darwin. And so it's a synthesizing of these two paradigms, just like we've been talking about, where you have what for several generations was seen as just mainline, atheistic, materialistic, scientism devoid of any kind of spirituality, where now this is progressing into this new era of, of, of awakening, this ontological awakening, as he, as he describes it, and how these things are not, are being portrayed as, as having no conflict with spirituality, with, of course, with new age spirituality, the spirit, and, the spirit science concept so pretty incredible i'm still it's, <laughs> i could probably i could probably just spend hours and hours picking apart so many of his videos but there's just li there's literally so much that it just it's kind of besides the point but completely embodying uh, things that i've been noticing more and more but on now on a level that i've never I mean, this this just goes for above and beyond anything I, any other example i've seen and he's got almost 200 of these videos his wikipedia page says that some people even uh describe him as sort of a, a Timothy Leary for the for the for the YouTube generation and things like this which is pretty amazing I guess he's a co-host of this uh, National Geographic show called brain games so I've never actually watched the show but I'm familiar with it and um, so he's in the you know he's pretty mainstream now there's just so much that could be said about this I mean just in how you see again and again the the people putting doing the editing and putting together the visuals you just see them showing the you see this motif again and again of like the human eye and then the eye the eye nebula or their you know the eye, or or galaxy and man that has been something that just struck, has struck me months ago and just when you think of all these things as being sort of subtle symbolism represent an aesthetic force to draw people into these metaphysical concepts and to invoke a sense of of wonder and awe and you know, when they're all they are is really they're just airbrush paintings that's what's so it's kind of sad and hilarious 